Hi everyone, it's Louise and welcome to this Verbling class. Um, oh, it's working! <laughs> Um, my class at nine o'clock this morning, my first class um, in, in our detective series didn't work this morning, but I think we're working. Oh, this is good news. Uh, Jiren Deer, good morning or good afternoon. How are you? Good morning, Chicha. Good morning. Um, I'm fine, thank you. Good, that's good. Uh, tell me, where are you from? I'm from Brazil. From Brazil, okay. So it's still morning for you. Yes. Yes, it's just it's just turned twelve o'clock for me, so <laughs> it's just just afternoon and and no more. Um. Yes, afternoon. Where are you from? I'm from Edinburgh, in Scotland. Ah, okay, Scotland. Yes. I, I was thinking you. Is United States? Ah, no, no. I'm from Scotland. Okay. Okay. Uh, well, it's very nice to have you uh, here today. Thank you for joining me. It's the first time that you're joining one of my classes. Um, and Fran, hi to you. Hello. How are you? I'm very well, thank you. How are you? I'm fine. I'm fine. Thanks. Good. And Fran, this is the first time that you're joining one of my classes. Where are you from? Uh, I'm from Spain, from Valencia. Do you know? Ah, yeah, um, I haven't been to Valencia, but I do. I am aware of Valencia. Yes. Ah, okay. <laughs> and what what have you been doing today so far? Uh, well, uh, it's. Uh, do, do you do you ask for for the weather? No. What what have you been doing? Ah yes, uh, uh, in, in uh, the, this morning I I I go to 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 shop to shop in the in the market uh -huh. and and uh, one hour in the gym and another hour with my little little uh, son in a in a swimming pool <laughs> one hour. Ah, oh, <laughs> okay. excellent. My goodness! Uh, yes, a wall morning. <laughs> a very busy morning. morning. Very yes. busy. Yes. Okay. Well, hopefully you will have a a nice relaxing um, um, hour with me, uh, learning a little bit um, about um, a gentleman called Deacon Brody who was from Edinburgh and learning some English as we go as well. Now I'm aware that my my connection, my camera feed seems to be a little bit slow, um, yes. but hopefully you can, everybody can hear me okay. Um, which is the main thing. It's not quite so important to see me. <laughs> um, so I'd also like to welcome Miriam. Hello, teacher. Good morning. Good morning. Hi there. Where are you from? I'm from, from Spain. You're from Spain. Okay. Where about in Spain are you from? Uh, I am from Murcia, on the south of, the, of Spain. Ah, okay. And have you had a busy day so far? No, it's a normal day for study a little bit English today. Okay, okay. Well, it's the first time that you've joined me, so very, uh, very warm welcome to you. Thank you for joining me uh, today. Um, and I'd like to say hello to Alberto. <laughs> it's so nice to stay here with you and the other guys for improve. Good. It's nice to have you here. Um, Alberto, hello. Can you hear me, Alberto? No? Okay. Right. We'll come back to Alberto. Um, we'll say hi to Abdallah. Yes. Hi. How are you, teacher? I'm fine, thank you. How are you? I'm great, thank you. Good. And Abdallah, is this the first time you've joined one of my classes? Yeah, definitely. Yeah? I think okay. And where are you from? I'm from Palestine. From Palestine, okay. And what have you been doing today? Actually, I was studying. I wa I'm working uh, on uh, master. Right. Okay. Yeah. So you've been studying for uh, your uh, your master's degree today. Yeah, exactly. Right. You you you're from uh, Scotland? I am from Scotland. Yes. Yes, that's uh, great. Because my university that I uh, attend to. There in Scotland, uh, Denver Business School. 
Oh, Edinburgh Business School? Yeah. Ah, okay, I'm from Edinburgh. Really? Yes. <laughs> yeah. Yes. <coughs> oh, excuse me. Um, yes. Okay, so you're doing you're doing a uh, your master's degree in business, your MBA. Yeah. Exactly. Ah, okay. Ah, that's that's very tough, I believe, from from people that I know who have done it. It's it's very hard. Yeah, exactly. Is really it? Right. Oh. <laughs> so you have you come to do English for a rest? <laughs> yeah, exactly. I was studying. I think about doing something fun. Excellent. Oh well, this is lots of fun today. Thank you very much for joining me. Um, and let me just quickly say uh, hello to Paco. Hello, teacher. Good morning. Oh, excuse me. I was just about to cough, so I thought I would have a quick a quick slurp of of tea. Um, uh, how are you today, Paco? I'm doing well, thank you. Good. Good. Oh. <laughs> And then the phone rang. <laughs> okay. Um, uh, and hello to Matthew. Hey. Hi. How are you? I'm doing great. How are you? I'm fine, thank you. And Matthew, where are you from? I'm from the US, from Chicago, Illinois. You're from what Chicago? About you? Okay, I'm, yeah. from I'm from Edinburgh in Scotland. Yeah, does my accent sound as uh, English? I mean, uh, as an US accent? Uh, no, not quite a US accent there. I detect a hint of another accent. I'm not sure what it is, though. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> nice to hear that. <laughs> okay, it's, it's very nice to have you here. It's the first time you're joining me today, isn't it? Yeah, sure. I uh, have. How long have you been studying? Uh, sorry, teaching on Vermont? Um, I've been teaching on Verbling since July. Oh my God! <laughs> but yeah, I'm on Verbling like since uh, 2013, and I never, I never came to your class. <gasps> you've never been to one of my class. Well, you see, you've made up for it now. You've you've joined me now, so there you are. You're here now. <laughs> so welcome, everybody. <laughs> nice to see. <you>. Uh, <laughs> nice to have everybody here today. As I said, unfortunately, my, my first class for today, my my nine o'clock class didn't ha go ahead because for some reason I was sitting talking to myself. Nobody could join, which was <laughs> which was very upsetting for me. Um, Alberto, no, I can't hear you. Um, can you try and speak again. Hey, hey, Luis. Aha, I can hear you now. Yes. There you are. Yes. How are you? Okay, I'm I'm fine. And you? Good, I'm fine, thank you. It's nice to have you here. Um, have you had a good week? Uh, no, I'm relaxing this week. Only relax. I okay. I, I I I work it a lot uh, in the past uh, the past week, and in this day I relax only. Right, good. That's good. A nice relaxing afternoon. And what we're going to do today is we're going to learn a little bit more about some history from um, from Edinburgh. So let me just. Get my screen ready. Where is he? Okay. Uh, so I shall just make the text a little bit bigger so that we can uh, all see this. Where are you? There we go. Okay. So we're going to talk about today uh, a gentleman from Edinburgh's past who is called. He's called Deacon Brody. Um, and he was a very well respected gentleman, uh, but he had a secret. And he became known as a gentleman by day and a what by night. Okay, so you have three options. Um, was he a murderer by night, a body snatcher, or a thief? Okay, so I need you to, to have a guess at what you think. <laughs> Deacon Brody was uh, by night, so he was a very nice gentleman during the day. He was very pleasant, a fine, upstanding gentleman in the community. In fact, he even sat on the city council, so he was a councillor. Uh, uh, but he had this um, this dark side to him. So let me see. Let's get guesses. Uh, Abdallah, what do you think? Do you think he was one, sorry, two, or three? Uh... What's body snatcher? 
A body snatcher. Oh, yeah. that's that's a good question. Okay. Um, what what do we think a body snatcher is? Okay, does anybody have a guess? <laughs> Let me see. Duran dear, do you can you have a guess? What do you think a body snatcher might be? Um teacher no, I, I think bodies. Okay, um, yes. So Someone snatching can... snatching bodies. So what do we mean by a snatcher? Some a body snatcher. To cut. To say again, Matthew. Cut, cut. To cut a body. Okay, not quite cut a body, um, but it, it, it is to do with the human body. Um, I shall, I shall tell you. Okay, has anybody? Well, I was going to say it's another famous um, pair of of uh, characters from Edinburgh's um, grim past, um, known as Burke and Hare. And they were very famous body snatchers, and we will learn more about them in an, in another lesson. But essentially, a body snatcher means that you steal dead bodies from either graveyards or um, from hospital beds. So there are people who steal bodies, um, and particularly Burke and Hare. We uh, we will learn about them later on. Uh, they they stole bodies to sell to Edinburgh University Medical Department, uh, who were looking for cadavers. Now, a cadaver is a dead body to allow students to to practice on to learn anatomy and to practice um, doing certain procedures. Uh, you know, cutting the bodies open so that they could look at the internal organs. And uh, Edinburgh University at the time had been advertising for um, for people to donate their bodies to medical science after their death, um, and Burke uh, and they would get their family would be rewarded with some money. Um, and this these pair of gentlemen, Burke and Hare, <coughs> saw an opportunity to make money by going around graveyards and digging up freshly uh, buried people and donating their bodies to uh, the medical department in return for money. So that's a body snatcher. Okay, so who thinks that uh, Deacon Brody was a body snatcher? Me, I think he explained uh, very deeply that, okay. so basically I believe that he's... Okay, so, so that's Matthew thinks he was a body snatcher? Oh, oh, sorry. Okay then, Paco. Uh, sorry, you have to you have to leave us so early in the call. Uh, oh, he's off. Um, he's had to leave us. Uh, okay, so that's one for body snatcher. Anybody else think that he was a body snatcher? No. Okay. What about a murderer? Who thinks he was a murderer? No. Paco, do you uh, not Paco? Sorry, uh, Fran, do you think he was a murderer? Yes, I, I think he's a murderer. A murderer, yes. That statue of him, he's he's got he's got some kind of uh, a bad look in his eye, doesn't he? He's got murderous tendencies. Looking looking in his eyes, yes. Yes, I, I, I think so. I think so. <laughs> <laughs> he's, he's got a look about him, doesn't he? He's, he he doesn't look like a, a nice gentleman. Yes. <laughs> yes he, he seems a bad guy. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yep. He's he's got that air about him. Yes. Okay. And Abdallah, do you think he was a murderer as well? No, actually, no. actually, uh, I think he's look like thief more than he looks like murderer. A thief. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And Alberto, do you think he looks like a thief as well? Uh, for me, thief is well. Yes. Yes, uh, a thief as well. But this, uh, this history. Okay. And yeah. Miriam, what about you? Do you think he's a murderer or a thief? No, for me, I think that he's a thief. You think he's a thief, okay? And finally, Duran Deer, do you think he's a thief? Um, I think the woman uh, men don't uh, don't would be anyone this op options. Oh, he's not any of. Oh my goodness, what do you think he could be then? Uh, 
maybe a worker, normally worker. Ah, you don't think that he had a bad reputation at night, and so so a gentleman by day and asleep at night. Okay, so he was an upstanding citizen. Okay, yes. shall we have a look and see who's right? Okay, so here he is. Okay, <coughs> let me just scroll down here. Okay. And if I can ask, let me see, Abdallah, can I get you to read out the first paragraph for me? Okay. Born in 1741, mm -hmm. William Brody was a cup, was a captain, mark, mark maker, and locksmith mm -hmm. by trade. Master. Treatment, treatment, at uh, at that he was the deco, the deacon president of mm -hmm. trade of a trade blood in Edinburgh and member of the city council. He was very respectable gentleman. Yes, okay, well done. Now, when we, when we say numbers, when we're putting them into years, uh, so we have this number here, we, we, say, we actually say, split it into two, diff, into two numbers, and we will say 1741. Yes. So, born in 1741. So, rather than saying 1741, we, we call the years 17 or 18, 19. Uh, so, uh, 1741, uh, William Brodie was a cabinet maker. So, he's a cabinet, cabinet maker. What's a cabinet? Cabinet maker. Do you know hmm. what a cabinet is? Alberto, do you know what a cabinet is? Uh, a cabinet uh, is the, um, uh, the 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 person that wore the uh, I don't know the um, uh, uh, this uh, he he make the 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 tables and the and I, I don't know the. That's it, exactly. You're right. He makes he makes furniture, yes. So furniture, he makes yes, okay. furniture out of wood. So uh, furniture. Oh my, my 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 typing seems to be very slow today. I'm. Uh, is it, is it, excuse me. Is the person that uh, that works the the wood? Yes. Uh huh. Um, so if he works with wood, we can call him a carpenter. Mm -hmm, yes, it's, uh, it's similar, and the, but the the cabinet market is the the person that you the, the I don't know the 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 the, the word uh, that uh, draw the uh, the. Mm, the paint, paint the, paint the, the wood. I, I think so. Uh, so uh, the <coughs> the the name of the person who, who are you saying paints the wood? I say paints the wood. Yes, yes. Paints the, the, the wood. Uh, uh, so yes, it's similar to the the marker, uh, the cabinet marker, a or cab I, I think uh, a cabinet. Uh, okay, so a cabinet maker is the person who will actually craft the furniture. So a cabinet is is like a sort of a storage a storage um, piece of furniture. So it might have drawers in it, or it might have um, shelves in it. So it's somewhere where you you store um, items. Um, uh, and so he's the one who makes makes the cabinets and makes the furniture. Um, Someone who paints the the cabinets. Who he would he would do that as well. I would imagine back in 1741, he probably did everything. So he will paint it or or put uh, varnish or lacquer on it. 
off. So he he will be doing that um, along with his assistants or his apprentices at the time. Um, and but uh, he he was a uh, he he was the one who made the the furniture, made these items, um, almost like wardrobes or closets. Uh, yes. That's really what a cabinet is. Okay. Yes. Okay. Um, and also, he uh, he was also not just a, a cabinet maker. He was a locksmith. What's a locksmith? The person that uh, made the uh, keys. Yeah, that's it. Yes. <laughs> so a locksmith makes keys, um, and the lock that goes with it. So he makes keys, and he also it makes the the locking mechanism that goes with the, the actual lock um, at the time. He was a master tradesman. Uh, so what's, what does that mean, a master tradesman? Uh, let's see, Matthew, what do you think? Uh, he, was no, he was a master tradesman. Um, master tradesman? I'm not mm -hmm. sure why is that. So, why, what's the answer for uh, our three? Ah, we're, we're, we haven't got to that yet. We're going to find okay. out. I'm not telling you. You'll have to work it out <laughs> when we read the rest of his story. Um, okay, so you're not sure about a master tradesman. Um, but when, when someone um, uh, is something like a cabinet maker, uh, or a carpenter, or uh, we might call them a joiner nowadays, or if someone, let me see, is a plumber, or a painter and decorator, we say that these kinds of jobs are known as a trade, and that the people who do them are tradesmen. So they have a, 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 um, a job that they are able to trade in, in terms of trading to get money. So I'll come in and I'll paint and decorate your house in return for you giving me some money. So we're no, they're known as tradesmen. He was a master tradesman, which means he was very good at his job. So he had worked for a very long time and had perfected the skill and the art of cabinet making and of being a locksmith. So he probably had apprentices in his workshop who worked under him and who he was teaching to become cabinet makers. So he was a master at what he did. Excuse and, me. Yes, uh, Alberto. Uh, is there the person who buys some sales too? Um, they would be called a trader. Yes, a trader. Uh, so rather than being a tradesman, where you've got you are um, you do one one particular job, so you're a plumber, for example. Um, but a trader is somebody who has goods for sale, so they will sell you goods, uh, and perhaps they will you will um, uh, barter for the goods or haggle. So we'll say, okay, I've got. Um, you know, this uh, this crop that I've grown, so I've got these apples or potatoes or something. Um, I will give you these potatoes in exchange for can you give me something that you've got um, as the trader. So that will be how a trader had um, started. But they they're more salesmen, uh, where they have items for sale, whereas a tradesman actually has a specific skill that yeah, they okay. can do. So like a plumber or a carpenter. Um, or a locksmith in the case of William Brodie. Okay. Okay. Um, so he was the deacon. Now, the deacon is is this sort of um, an official word that was given in the 1700s, meaning that he was the president of a trade guild. Now, mm -hmm. a guild is just another word, an old-fashioned word for um, a society or, um, or a, a, a group of um, similar uh, people. So the trade guild of the cabinet maker society, uh, we could call him. So he was the president of the cabinet makers uh, guild. Is in, the, in principal, the principal of the, in, in any uh, some group? 
the principal, the principal, the principal yes, the principal, yes, he was, yeah. he had been elected the principal, the, the leader of the trade guild yeah. in Edinburgh, yes, so he had been okay. awarded this position by fellow cabinet makers who were also members of this, this trading guild. So they probably met and they, they may very well have set standards for cabinet making. They may have agreed procedures and agreed um, ways of doing things and shared practices on how to, to carve wood or to, to make cabinets in the most effective way. Um, so uh, that's what would happen in a trade guild, the collection of, of people within the same business area who come together and um, form an association um, to uh, continue their, their art form or their business form that they're doing. And he was also a member of the city council. So not only was he well respected within his own trades, within cabinet makers, because he was the president, but he was obviously uh, very popular in terms of the people of Edinburgh because he was elected as a member of the city council as well. So he was a very respectable gentleman. What does it mean he was a very respectable gentleman? Respectable, I think, is uh, is was uh, he's very polite and he is can treat with other with good ways. Yes, that's it exactly. He had this this very good reputation. So he was very polite. Um, he uh, he dressed in fine clothes, um, and he was deemed to be someone who. Um, was uh, who behaved in a proper manner, who uh, showed everybody in, in Edinburgh that this is the way to behave, that um, you, you can run your own business and be respectable and this is how to get on. You know, I'm the president of the Trade Guild and I'm a member of the council, you know, which are both very respected um, uh, positions to hold. Okay. Could so you please? Yes. Excuse me, could you please uh, write the uh, reputation in the bo book share? Reputation, yes, yeah, sure. Oh, reputation. Oh, I can't spell. Reputation. There we go. Thank you. Reputation. There we are. So he has a good reputation. So his name was known in Edinburgh and it was a it was good people who thought highly of him and um, they didn't suspect that he led a double life so he had a good reputation okay uh, let me see uh, Fran can you read out the next paragraph for me yes sure but Brody led a double life he liked it to gamble and had not one but two mistress and fated five children between the two women. An expensive life for even a high ranking man such such as Brody. Okay, well done. Okay, so he led a double life. Yeah. So he he liked. 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 Okay. Liked. Yeah. Okay. Uh, he liked to gamble and had not one but two mistresses and fathered five children between the two women. Oh dear. Mm. <laughs> He's not sounding so good now, is he? <laughs> yes, it's difficult. Okay. <laughs> a double life. <laughs> yes, so a double life. What, um, what do you understand by a double life? Uh, I think a double life is when uh, you are in 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 one place uh, uh, in in I, I don't know to, to explain. Uh, I think your your behavior is different in in one time and in another time. Uh, for example, in this case, uh, you you may be very polite in one situation, and in another situation, you uh, may be a uh, a uh, uh, a thief, for 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 example, or yeah. a murderer. 
Yes, yes, you're right. So, yes, that was a very good explanation of a double life. It's where he behaves in a certain manner in front of certain people and then behaves in a different way um, in front of other people. So, yes, he leads this double life um, and he liked to gamble. Okay, so I'm not, I'm not sure back in the 1700s, I'm not sure what, what sort of things um, they did in terms of gambling. It possibly would be some kind of card game or a game with dice. Um, it wouldn't be, we wouldn't have casinos back in those days, so it wouldn't be you know, anything like roulette or, or games like that, uh, but it will be something, uh, something to do with cards, I would imagine. Um, so he obviously liked to liked to play cards or liked to gamble his money and he had not one but two mistresses so he had two women um, yeah. at the same time and had five children between both of those women um, uh, excuse me yes yes Alberto but the, in this case uh, I think that the the when the the history say that he liked to gamble, uh, is, uh, this what is isn't the 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 gamble as a as the poker and the other games? I think so. The uh, gamble has uh, because he has he has a, a two two lives two lives. Two lives, yes, yes. Yes, I, I think I think so. Yes. Yes, um, yes. For me, is isn't that uh, the per this person was uh, was uh, the 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 gamer? Yes, the, gam is the, yes the gambler. Yes. The gambler. Yes. Okay. Yes. Yes. So so you're right. So so he had this very respectable image. This respectable life, where he's the cabinet maker, uh, the locksmith, the member of the city council, and then he had this other persona, uh, the gambler, uh, where he liked to to lead this this um, completely different life, where he gambled. He had two he had two mistresses. Uh, you know, so he was obviously you know living with one for a little bit and going to the other one and leading this this expensive life yeah. um, and so even back in 1741 and even although he was very successful cabinet maker um, member of the city council um, president of the trade guild so he would be very well paid he would have a, considered to be a very wealthy man at his time but obviously in his second life with the gambling and the women and the children um, that was a very expensive upkeep that he had to have you know, so his his money possibly didn't uh, go uh, as far as it, it possibly should have uh, so a very expensive life so I think I thought oh, Matthew's, Matthew's gone uh, because Matthew was desperate to know what, what he was but I think we're about to find out uh, what what uh, he was by night. Uh, so let me see. Uh, Duran Deer, can I get you to read uh, the next paragraph, please? Okay, Chicha. So, Brody used the knowledge he gained when he visited wealthy customers around Edinburgh, learning about any security measures, made walks copious of their case, and under the cover of darkness, would break in to their houses and steal their valuables. He even copied the case to a bank and stole um, 800... Oh, that's eight, pounds. Pounds. That's a pound sign. So, eight, 800 pounds. Yes. Okay. A huge amount of money at the time. Yep. Okay. So let I'll just highlight that. We'll go. We'll go over some of the vocabulary, but I'll just um, highlight this bit here. So that that is the sign for British pounds. So that's pound sterling. Uh, oh. So that's the pound. Okay. So um, uh, so that so that's I'll I'll type it into the chat box. Oops. So well, that's the pound sign. And then we have the dollar sign. 
Um, and um, the other one that we might have is a Euro, but I can't find it on my keyboard. <laughs> <laughs> so, so the other one is a euro that you might see, but I can't see it. I know that it is somewhere on the keyboard, but I can't see it. Um, but those are probably the two ones uh, that's, that you might come across. Probably the dollar sign. Uh, yes, the US dollar sign is the most common one that you'll see, which it, it looks like an S with a line drawn through it. Um, and the, the, um, the pound sign is almost a sort of a very strangely written E, capital E. Uh, Van, hello. Um, sorry, uh, I'll just type hello to Van because uh, thinks that we're all ignoring him. Uh, hello. <laughs> uh, so, so yes, yeah, so that's a pound sign. So we would say eight hundred pounds um, when he's uh, the money that he stole from the bank. Okay, so let's let's go back a little bit and look at what was he up to. Oh my goodness me, um, he he wasn't very nice at all, was he? This, this respectable gentleman by day. What did he do at night times? He stole the banks. He stole from the bank. Yes, he did. He robbed the bank. And and who else? <coughs> <coughs> who else did he steal from? Miriam, who else did he steal from? He stole from the bank, and who else did he steal from? I don't understand your question. Okay, so he stole money from from his from a bank. Uh, yeah. and and wealthy customers, no? Is that's it, it. Yes, yes, Fran. Yes, he stole from wealthy customers. Uh, so here. So he uh, he would be asked by um, by Edinburgh residents um, if he they would if he would go and visit their houses um, to to talk about making some piece of furniture. So he would go so that he could measure and make sure that what he was going to build would fit where they wanted it to go. And while he was there, he would look around the house and take notes or, or make an, a mental note of any security measures that might be in the house, um, made wax copies of their keys uh, because he was a locksmith, um, and then he would break into their houses and steal their valuables. Uh, so he was perhaps uh, going in to replace locks yeah. or to, to make other keys. Um, but uh, but he was then taking copies of their keys so that he could then open their doors without raising any suspicion as to what was going on. Uh, uh, Luis, uh, sorry, uh, yes. one question. Uh, I, I I don't know if uh, William Brody uh, was married with anyone or uh, uh, both of two mistress are only mistress and not the, the wife of, of him. Ah, that's not known. Um, we don't know if he had a, an actual wife. Okay. Um, so we, we don't know that part of his history. Um, I think because we don't know but and we do know that he had mistresses, I think we can possibly assume that he didn't have a wife um, and rather that he had um, uh, these two mistresses, possibly because even back in the 1700s there were probably rules about being married and you know if uh, one of these women were his wife he would probably have to to um, pay more money or pay taxes in some kind of way for being married so he probably didn't want to do that even okay. though it was a very expensive life for him with two yes, mistresses. Yes. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> he, he must to stall a lot to to keep the five children. I, I understand. Yes. <laughs> <William>. <laughs> yes, he, he must have stolen a lot to keep the yes. five children and the two women. Don't don't forget the women. Us us women we're quite expensive sometimes. <laughs> yes, <Are you> sure. <laughs> Uh, okay, so he learned about any security measures. Now, if we think that it's the 1700s, so that's well, 300 years ago, um, then we're not talking about things like um, alarm systems or um, what else, you know, some extra strong security locks and 
uh, and things like that. What sort of things do you think uh, he might be learning about? What sort of security measures might you have in the 1700s, do you think? Now, there's no right or wrong answer here because I'm not sure. I just want your ideas on what you think security measures might have been 300 years ago. Uh, I think he tried to find if he has uh, uh, a dogs. Like dogs, uh-huh. Because they, they use it for security measures. Yes, uh-huh. I think that's a, that's a, a good assumption to make, that there might be um, dogs, yes. Uh, Alberto, what do you think? Yes, uh, I think too, um, and I, I think that uh, they... They had a, a person who, who, who I don't know the the, the word who, who he who they 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 was in their I don't know that help the person that help the the house uh, I don't know. Uh, Excuse me, I don't know the, 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 the war. Okay, do you mean maybe somebody who was paid by the, the members of the house to to guard their home? Who, yes. Who maybe had to sit, to sit in the, in the, the, at the doorway and, and uh, stay awake during the night time to, to prevent intruders yes. coming into the house. Okay, uh-huh. The, the, the person that... The, 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 uh, was carrying the 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 the, the home the house. Uh -huh. I, I think so. Yes, so so a, almost like a security guard. Yes. yes. Uh huh. So somebody security who was paid war. to yes. to guard war. the house. Yes. 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 Okay. Yes. Okay. Yes. Another good idea. Um, that's quite possible yeah. that somebody was there who who was to look after the house at night time while the the residents slept. Yes. I think also I think in these times uh, maybe uh, there are uh, there was a, a strong box or money box. Uh huh. It's, it's, it's a possibility, no? That's a possibility, definitely. I would think so um, because you know he's, he stole money from the bank. We we can see that, and it's quite possible that if if he was visiting wealthy customers that they also have some kind of strong box or yes. uh, safe or some some kind of uh, mm. place where they would they would keep their valuables yes I think well, that's a very, very good idea yes Luis what is the best word to 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 say a strong box a money box or safe box what do you think? Um, well I think a strong box um, is, is a good um, is a good word. Uh, I certainly okay. think that strong box would be good, or we could just say a safe. A um, safe. A safe. Um, now it wouldn't be a very, it wouldn't be sophisticated in, in the way that, that safes are very sophisticated now, um, but <coughs> it would have locking mechanisms and you know maybe a combination lock. Um, so the, it, the, it would be a, it would be safe, but a strong box is something that um, would also be be there at that time as well. I think. Okay. Um, so so yes, th those are both good words to have. Yeah, definitely. Okay. Uh, in these cases, uh, are uh, uh, safes uh, box safes or similar? Uh, or not not a okay. box safe. Uh, so a strong box or a safe, or they wouldn't. They, we wouldn't call it something like a safety deposit box. Okay. Okay. Um, yeah. Deposit uh, box. Yeah. yeah, not a safety deposit box. We would probably call it now. Yes, we would say safety deposit box. But back in those days, um, in the seventeen, the early seventeen hundreds, that that sort of idea. I'm not sure that something like that would have been around. So it would probably be very large. Uh, almost yeah. looking like large pieces of furniture uh, where where um, people would keep their valuables um, and uh, obviously he was in the right trade not only being a locksmith but also a cabinet maker so he probably made a lot of the the furniture that his his wealthy cu customers were actually going to keep their their valuables in and he was then going to go back in afterwards and steal everything that was inside the, the, the strong boxes. 
Yeah, so he learned about the security measures in these houses and made wax <laughs> copies of their keys. So he would probably have a piece of, of candle wax that he's melted down so it's quite soft in the palm of his hand. And if, for example, he said to his customers, um, oh, I'll need a key to the house uh, so that I can um, bring the furniture in. Um, and they say, oh, yes, not a problem. Here you go. Here's the key. And so he has the key and he will make a, a copy of it um, and give them their key back once he's brought the furniture in. But he has a copy so he can make um, his own his own set of keys. Or maybe he's actually just found the keys uh, lying somewhere. We don't know. But however he did it, he made wax copies of their keys. And when it was dark, he would break into their houses and steal their valuables. Um, and even as we, we've discovered, went to the bank and stole £800 uh, from a bank, um, which doesn't sound terribly much nowadays, but £800 would have been a lot of money um, at that time. Okay, uh, let me see. Miriam, uh, mm. can I get you to read out the next paragraph, please? Okay. His downfall started when he and his gang of thieves tried to steal from a local tax office. His plan failed and the gang were caught. Fearing they, they, no, he would be connected to the Queen. Brody fled to the Netherlands, his intention being to board a seat to America. But he was arrested in Amsterdam and was returned to Edinburgh to face trial. Okay. Yes, okay. So his downfall started. What What do we mean by his downfall? Mm, I don't know. Okay. Can somebody maybe su uh, help uh, Miriam uh, and suggest what, what do we think his downfall? I think... Hey. Go ahead. Oh, no, no, I don't worry. But oh, times, no. maybe? Bad type, bad uh, times, uh-huh. I don't know. No, okay. Bad times, uh-huh. Uh, Abdallah, do you have another suggestion? Uh, I think he, he he's telling us when he was the start the ba doing bad things and like the stealing the, the other properties or something like that. Okay, okay, we're getting there. Yep, yep. So his downfall, so that meant that obviously he was getting away with, with um, stealing people's valuables um, and breaking into banks because the police or um, uh, probably <laughs> in the 1700s, the police force weren't really the police as we know them nowadays. And, and so there, there weren't lots of detectives and there weren't um, uh, the, the the officers available to investigate these things, so a lot of crime probably went un, um, unpunished and undetected. So he was getting away with stealing valuables from people's houses and then it looks like he started to get a bit greedy and that's when his downfall started. So that was when um, people started to realize that there was something going on and that he he was eventually uh, this was the him leading to him getting caught um, so he had a gang of thieves so he wasn't just doing this by himself so he was maybe going to uh, lots of customers and getting lots of keys so he had a group of thieves who would go and steal from lots of houses as well as he also going out and doing this as well and they tried to steal money from the local tax office um, and something went wrong when the when his gang tried to break into the tax office I think um, there are there are different versions of what possibly happened one is that there was actually still people working in the office when the thieves tried to break in um, and so some of them were caught um, and um, uh, his plan to rob the or to steal from the tax office was uh, was foiled or it failed, um, and he feared, fearing that he would be connected to the crime. So he uh, thought that members of the gang, who um, who had been caught, and um, that they would say, okay, well the leader of our gang, the person who's in charge of us, is uh, William Brody, 
and so fearing that he would be connected, he fled to the Netherlands. What does that mean? He fled. Let's see. Duran Deer, what do you think? He fled to the Netherlands. What does that mean? What did he do? When you go to other country for be safe. Yes, to be safe. Something That's like right, that. Miriam. Yeah. Yes. So fearing that he would be uh, he would be arrested, he would be caught. Uh, he went to the Netherlands. So he got on a boat. Um, and he sailed over, he fled to the Netherlands um, and he wasn't just going to stop in the Netherlands, he had decided that that wasn't far enough away, that he was then going to get another ship and go to America. Um, but um, word had been, uh, had already reached Amsterdam that uh, he was a wanted criminal in Edinburgh and he was arrested in Amsterdam uh, and they returned him to Edinburgh to face trial. Uh, so obviously his crimes were so severe and they had built up over a number of, of years that um, he was going to face trial. And so finally a jury found Brodie guilty and he was hanged in 1788 and watched by a crowd of 40,000 people. Uh, so in, in those days in Edinburgh, uh, the, it was public hanging. So there's actually, um, if I change this and let me uh, get a picture of, uh, let me see, uh, whoops, I can't even spell Edinburgh. <laughs> uh, Okay, so in Edinburgh, oh, and here we can see it here. Let me show you this picture. Um, if everybody can see, oh, let me change this one. So you can see, oops, stop, share, there we go, share this one, there we are. Okay, so this is an old drawing of um, uh, a piece of a part of Edinburgh called the Mercat Cross um, and it, this this uh, monument in the middle here is where um, uh, official people would stand and make declarations um, and as you can see there are people um, gathered um, around the, this uh, this monument uh, listening to the proculate procu Procul oh, I can't say it. Proclamation. There we go. Oh dear. <laughs> Tricky word. Um, so here this postcard is saying it's a royal proclamation, so a declaration from the king um, that would be made. But also there would be notices of public hangings because the buildings in the background are actually and still are the, the highest courts in, in Scotland. These are the, the high courts. Uh, so this is where uh, even today where big, um, big criminal cases are tried uh, mm -hmm. in Edinburgh. Uh, and so if somebody was sentenced to a hanging, they would be, the gallows would also be in this area um, and they would be publicly hanged back in the 1700s, which is not very pleasant, um, but that was what they did. And this, uh, like, oh, I'm trying to click on the wrong picture. Uh, let me just close that down. And this is a picture of what it looks like today. Uh, so as you can see it's not really changed, it's still the, the same um, structure and behind it here um, this is St Giles Cathedral, um, very beautiful church right in the city centre um, and in the 1700s in front of St Giles Cathedral up behind this big this tree here uh, there was a jail uh, so Deacon Brodie would have been kept in the jail up until the point of when he was sentenced to death um, and then he would be, um, he was hanged. Uh, so that is the story of Deacon Brodie. Uh, so as you can see, not a very nice gentleman. Uh, and what was he? So he was a gentleman by day and a what by night? Yeah, very thief. <laughs> He was a thief. He was a big thief, wasn't he? Yes. <laughs> he was the, uh, really uh, not a very nice person. Um, a thief 
uh, by night. Yes. Um, does anybody have uh, from their the history in their own their own countries and their own cities where where you're from? Do you have a similar a similar person who had uh, a a daytime persona and a nighttime uh, did something uh, evil or bad during the night? Well, uh, sorry. Uh, I, I think nowadays in Spain, in, there are a lot of people like like uh, William Brady. Ah, uh -huh. <laughs> but the the sentence for 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 day is is lower than than this. Yes, yes. I not think not so much call for public hangings nowadays. Yes. Not, <laughs> no, no, <laughs> not, not, yes. not much. Yes. Um, so yes, you, you're right. That's unfortunately, it's still a case where we do still have people who who do co come and steal during the night. What what do we call people nowadays uh, who break into people's houses uh, and steal valuables? What what's the word that we use for them? Mm, I think that uh, uh, in in Colombia and in the, in the other countries, uh, uh, the uh, 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 it have uh, any 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 people that in the they are uh, teacher and the and the um, out of the the her other uh, work uh, mm -hmm. the people are uh, I don't know the infanticide I don't know the the number and uh, he he took the 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 children uh, and, 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 and died and, and murdered, I don't know the, the word. Oh, okay. So a teacher had a group of children. And, yes. And, yes. and, and did, what, what, did the teacher get the children to, to steal? Yes, yes. Wow. Oh, okay. Oh, that's not good, teaching children to steal. Yes, mm. yes. Yeah. Okay, um, Anwar, you're watching. Um, you have to have a good reputation. Yes, you can say that. Yes, you have to have a good reputation. Uh huh. If you want to be a, a, a fine, upstanding citizen of the world, then yes, you need to have a good reputation. Definitely, I think so. Yeah. Um, and the word that I'm looking for, um, that we would call uh, somebody who breaks into people's houses, um, is uh, we would call them a burglar. So, so nowadays you would say you know, we, I've been burgled um, and uh, that's when somebody has broken into your house so perhaps just broken your door or broken a window to break into your house um, and, and then steal, steal things, items of value from your house that they can then sell. Um, so, so yes, I think we, there, there are stories in history and stories from now um, where yes, there, there are still thieves and uh, Fran, yes, bankers. <laughs> I don't think it's just yes. in Spain. <laughs> it's a joke only, yeah. I think right the way around the world, I think you could probably <laughs> say that bankers are still possibly um, thieves, yes, in some kind of way. Not that I want to offend anybody who might be a banker. I'm not suggesting it for a second that all no, bankers are thieves, but, of course. <laughs> but, but the banking in general, I think, is what we want yes, to say. <laughs> yes, yeah, yeah, sure. <laughs> yes. Okay, well, it's been lovely um, uh, having everybody here today. Um, I am finishing now because I'm about to start another class. I can't remember what it's about. I think it's about ED endings, uh, if I remember rightly. So if you have a spare hour, come and join me uh, in the next hour, and I shall see you either then or maybe tomorrow or in another class. So take care, yes. everyone, and uh, thank you for joining me. Thank okay. You, Thanks a lot. Thank please. you. Bye. Bye. See you later. Bye. Bye.